This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. Hello, welcome to the Materials Destructive Testing Lab at my university. I have been running a lot of tensile tests today, 63 of them. So I'm going to show you how I set up the machine and basically the buttons I click in the software to get my load versus extension curve and export the CSV file I then convert to a stress strain curve. So for each sample, because of the variability of 3D printing, I wanted to take an average cross-sectional area. So I took five measurements of length and width throughout the gauge length region of each sample. To load my sample, I basically center it in the trucks, and this tensile sample has a gauge length of 50 millimeters, so I try to center this gauge length in between here. And I try to keep the sample as straight as I can. Then for this cross head, because I tested the sample previously, it's actually higher than I want it to be, so I go back to the machine controller hit this button and this allows me to control the system using these up and down. So I'm going to hit down so that the top cross head moves down. And I use this cross head reading to gauge my reference. Before every test, I put this zero so I see the distance my cross head moves and that way I can kind of guess how much I need to move it down to reset the distance here. So once I've moved it down, I can just lock this. Then after tightening the top cross head, I'm going to put my extension meter back on my sample. Just like this. I use these springs around the sample to hold the extension meter on it. And I create a small gap at the top of the extension meter to limit like how many negative values show up in the CSV file. So now this top truck is tightened, this bottom one is tightened, I have the meter on. I hit this button because I no longer want to control from the controller. This is the MTS Test Suite TW Elite software. To prepare for a new test, I need to zero my crosshead signal, I need to zero my extension meter, my extensometer signal, and I need to zero my load signal. Once all of these are zeroed, I can hit the play button. So this play button only shows up when I have locked the controller. So if I unlock the controller, this changes up here, as you can see, to a little icon of the machine controller. The handset has exclusive control. If I lock the controller, it goes back to play. So now I'll hit run the test. This is just to make sure I have the proper width and thickness measurements of the gauge length region of my tensile sample. This is good, so I'm going to hit OK. And then now we'll watch the curve generate. sample failed. I don't know if you heard that, but coming back to our system, you can see the obvious crack in the sample. 
And yeah, that is how you run a tensile test on the MTS Criterion Model 43 decalamuting machine. I don't return to zero because that would make these two collapse and basically crush this sample. So I hit no. And then for data collection purposes, I take a screenshot of this and save it in the test file. In here we have test 62. I'll show you. I've been having this weird issue, not really an issue, but occurrence today where a lot of the samples break where the extensiometer spring is, so this happened. I've had two cases today where this just flew off of the sample because of where it cracked. After a sample is done testing, what I do is remove the extensiometer and then I loosen the chucks or the crossheads and take the sample out. Sometimes when we're working on a project or inventing a solution to a problem, we run into this bottleneck of our idea and the tools we have to bring that idea to life. So when it comes to 3D printing, very nice surface finish parts like with SLS or printing in metal, not everyone is gonna have those capabilities right in their basement studio or in their garage. DCB Way allows you to explore new tools and implement them in your projects. I have a few ideas for uses in metal printing that I hope I can feature on the channel very soon. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Welcome to PCB Way's homepage. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed was actually their ongoing badge design contest which might be similar to some of those thingiverse or instructable competitions you guys might be familiar with. I absolutely love that PCB Way has this kind of maker community aspect to their site where not only do they have design competitions but if you click on the main page, they actually showcase projects every week. So back on their services, along the top here, you can see they have many different capabilities. We're going to be exploring the 3D printing service today. I mean, quite fitting for my channel. It's as simple as just dropping in a file. So let's go ahead and drag in one of my STL files. So you can see we've got a 3D view right here where I can preview the part that I've uploaded. Now I can go in and fill my details. Thank you again to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Editing Dora, I'll bring in to ask if any of you watching have had experience working with the current machine on screen. We currently have this machine in our mechanical testing lab. This machine was donated to our university by a local industrial partner, you know, for tax purposes, but basically ever since it's set foot on university grounds, the machine has not been operational and no one has any clue how to fix it or what's wrong with it. So mm, any expertise or at least idea on where to get started with it would be great. Thank you. I definitely want to do a second part to this video regarding how I process all the collected data because the tensile machine returns a CSV file with only load in kilonewtons and then extension in millimeters. So some conversion needs to be done to get stress and strain and then plot it and withdraw all the key values like ultimate stress, fracture stress, Young's modulus, things like that. I also have been working on some Python code that I've been exploring through Jupyter Notebooks and Anaconda and I'd be happy to share that even though it's not the most elegant code. All of that in the time warp setting so I have a sped up version of that explanation if you're curious okay try number two uh, this is the new way of storing all my test samples that I'm trying out it involves a binder and those like trading card protector things so the nice thing is I can store nine samples per sheet and I also like that they're all confined into one binder and it's easy to put in my backpack. It does, though, require a fair amount of tape. I need to tape down each sample so that they don't fall out in transit. For the most part, I quite like this method. I like keeping the halves together since I want to take some close-up shots with a microscope camera of each of the fracture areas so that I can really 
do an analysis of the voids and how the parts failed, whether it was along the pass lines or the layer lines of the part. So yeah, keeping the ends together helps me find them a lot easier than digging them all out from a box. Editing Dora here, just wanted to pop in and make a comment on this organization solution I previously showed. Ideally, I would like a solution that doesn't require that much masking tape. I kind of didn't really have another way to secure those samples within the trading card sleeves without them falling out. I could have used a stapler, didn't have that one on hand. So after further reflection, I think moving forward, I still do really like the idea of having all of these samples in a binder, but instead of using the trading card holders, I think what I'll do is find like medium sized plastic bags. Usually at the dollar stores, you can find them in the craft section and double sided tape those to like a piece of cardstock that has holes and fits in a binder. And then that way, I have the sealing action of a plastic bag so none of my parts fall out if I move my binder around, turn pages, flip it upside down. But I think that's my idea moving forward. 